Hey you folks, so I think it's finally time to atone for some past sins. Um, remember that funny playing Game Boy Pocket install I did? Well here's what we're doing. We're gonna fix it. I've already got some of the parts transferred over, but not all of the parts. This is the same motherboard and the same rear housing. And I've got the battery cover right here. Um, I decided instead of just replacing it with a clear, another clear shell, since I'm using aftermarket parts, you know, I thought, hey, I already have a clear back, let's make a Lost and Limited Game Boy Color, um, not exactly a reproduction, because, I mean, this is a pocket, but, you know, I, th I, I thought it would be pretty cool. Um, fortunately or unfortunately, um, these aftermarket shells are uh, glow-in-the-dark. It's kind of hard to tell because of all the lights. Yeah, you can see if I hold that there, it's glowing, just fluorescing it, exciting it with a laser pointer, but the Lost and Limited one doesn't doesn't do that. Uh, so I guess that's one way, if you ever want to tell if you have a uh, reproduction, of course, as soon as I start filming, um, if you want to tell if you have a reproduction Lost and Limited Game Boy Color, just, you know, see if it's glow in the dark, because the legit ones aren't. But anyway, moving on. Of course, this one's obviously not a legitimate Lost and Limited because it's not a Game Boy Color. So this is an aftermarket shell here. Um, same Game Boy Pocket motherboard that I did. Uh, as it turns out, the Game Boy Pockets, the only ones that came with the green motherboard were the uh, clear ones, the one that I ruined through negligence. But such is life. I'm not going to dwell on it too much. I did already, uh, like I said, I did transfer over some of the parts, so the touch sensor is already in here, and the, um, whatchamacallit, the shell is already trimmed for the new screen. Uh, I did this one on my Dremel. It was so much easier than trimming it manually. I think it came out a little bit better too. So I guess in this video we just need to install a new LCD and install a new speaker. Now the speaker does still work in this one, but as part of uh, my negligence, I ruined the speaker in this one. I think it's still fine, but it does sound a little bit quieter than I think it should. And that probably has to do with the fact that the speaker cone is very warped. So I'm gonna pop this out here, and you can see, kinda, you can see how it's pushed in. It doesn't move as freely as it should, uh, so we'll, we will. I'm just gonna use this one as a donor, this Game Boy Pocket. I don't know what's going up with this. What's going on with this? I was playing with it at some point. Uh, while I was trying to fix a Game Boy Light, and that video will go up eventually, but not for a long time, um, because I'm still working on it. So I need to desolder this. Do -do -do. There we go. And save that, and uh, this isn't a very good speaker. Uh, I can clean that up, that's okay. Sorry, there's a lot of junk in it. I just tried this with the DMG and it didn't work too well, but in this case there are some, there's a big magnetic bit that I was trying to get. <clears throat> it looks like there's a lot of stuff in the inside. I don't like that. Let me see the alternative is I have one of these. This is a Game Boy Advance speaker, but it should work just fine. I think this will be fine. Where's my case here? <clears throat> I'm not looking to have to modify. Yeah, that'll that'll fit in there just fine. Looks fine too. Doesn't look grossly out of place. And 
yes, I am still beating myself up over what happened because this is was the cleanest pocket I had. And then I went and did something dumb. But we all we all make mistakes. It's okay. Crusty, and I think I will clean it up only because it's transparent. And so if you look close enough, you can probably see it. But there we go. This big old solder blob will do it. This needs to go like that, I believe. I think that's gonna go like that. Give or take, let's make sure the speaker works. This volume, is it down? I don't know how I don't know this by now. Yeah, it is down. Yep, we're good. All right. So I'm just gonna set that aside. We'll come back to that. Now we need to focus on the front half of the shell. Now, like I said, I did already trim this. I did already put the sensor in. And you might notice I even have a bracket in here. Um, this is a bracket that I was prototyping. I think it should be good. I really hope it's good because I can't get it out. <laughs> it's uh, tolerances is something I'm still working on. Um, I'm not very good at it yet. I may never be very good at it, but I kind of just shoved it in there and it didn't fit as easily as I hoped it would, but I just shoved it anyway. Oh, maybe I can get it out. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little on the tight side. Um, future revisions will have this accounted for. And in my defense, I took my measurements using a melted shell. Mm. I mean, I'm really pleased that on the first prototype, I got it so close though. I need a different tool for this. This keeps bending. This isn't, it's not doing it for me. It's not doing it. Um, I don't think my tweezers are gonna work any better. I think those will just bend. I'll try the back. I'm also trying very hard to not ruin the shell, but cause ruining, ruining another shell would be really um, heartbreaking, especially since I don't have another one. I was kind of banking on not ruining this. I also suppose I really don't need to get this out if it lines up properly, so... Screw it. I'm just gonna put it back in. And we'll try it one more time. See how the screw post doesn't quite line up. It's just a hair off, but if I just included some tolerances in these uh in 
in these holes. Oh, there we go. Aha! Okay, got that out, good. Uh, so now we need to get the screen. Uh, unfortunately, I can't transfer over the um, original adhesive, so I'm gonna have to use new adhesive here. I'm gonna turn the iron off for now. I'm not gonna need it for a little while. And that's where these come into play. So you can get these Blackberry, shit, I forget what they're called. I'll put the details in the description. Um, but you can get this whole assembly you know, including the rear of the phone and the keyboard and the touchscreen and the, everything. It's like literally $5 shipped. Um, it's cheaper than replacement screens, but the uh, catch is that uh, you have to get the LCD out of this thing on your own. I highly recommend purchasing a, um, just buy a replacement L LCD. The only reason I didn't in this case was because at the time I really wanted to do this like right away and my favorite game store didn't have these stocked so I didn't really know what to do. Uh, I think to get this out the easiest way forward is to just break these screw posts off because I'm pretty sure the screen went in on top and then the digitizer went down but I honestly don't care about saving this. So we'll just break it apart. And see how far that gets us. All right, even though I got the metal bits out of the way, there's still some plastic. Let's see if we can slip it out. And full disclosure, if I do break this, I do still have a spare, so I'm not that concerned. Okay, that'll work, but I need to deal with that now. I don't know how. Um, we'll just, I think we can get this one, bend it out of the way. And then I think we can slip it out from the bottom. I need, like, one extra hand. Hopefully I'm not ruining it. But even if I do, again, it was only five bucks. I'm not gonna be heartbroken. And I do have a spare. Can we pull it by that? Oh, we totally can. You can pull it by the digitizer cable to lift it a little bit. Let me, just in case, I'm gonna lift this one up too. Oh, that one came right out. The rest of the, no, I'm not gonna take the rest of them out because I'm using them to bend the material out of the way. that and then I'm going to try sliding this over while pushing that to the side. Or maybe I'll just pull it at an angle. There we go. I got that side released and now it should just drop out. We can throw this out. We don't need this. And since I've ruined the uh, screw brackets, it's not very useful anyway. Okay, on. Oopsie! Go. That's what I get for putting that on my space bar. That's gonna go right there. So I, uh, actually I'm gonna set this aside. This has zero protection on it and I'm gonna need to handle it. So I'm gonna wrap it up in a microfiber cloth, set it aside 
and get. Do, 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 do. The full other kit that I have. And we're just going to manipulate this one because this one has a protective film on it. The reason being, I want to smile for the camera. Uh, but I want to uh, make sure my bracket is going to work the way I think it is. So this would go in here. And I think there is quite a bit of play. That's okay. Let's try it out. Set that aside. We need to reinstall this. In yeah. oh, I should turn my iron on. Whoops. I kind of want to save this for something. I don't know what yet, but something. I mean, obviously a keyboard, but in what is the question? All right, that's nice and hot. I literally just put my tweezers away for some reason. Oh well, give me a chance to grab the ones I like better. There we go. Nice and clean. Nice, nice, nice. Pop that in here with a game to hold it in place. And some batteries to power the whole thing. Actually, I'm going to use these because this is power hungry. go in here. I'm just going to pull these game or buttons out now before I lose them. And I'm just holding the screen up against the uh, bracket or I think where the bracket is. Yeah. Holding it up against the bracket and against the top and let's Turn it on. So the bracket needs to move over. That is definitely what needs to happen. Uh, it needs to go up a little too, but that's not going to happen unless I make it crooked. So this bracket needs to be bigger. How off is it? That looks about a millimeter. Alright, let me try something because I, uh, there's a bit of plastic on here for insulation, by the way. Um, I wish I could blame drugs or alcohol for this, but apparently it's just been that stressful of a year that I went and designed not only this PCB, but this one. I designed the exact same spacer twice. Um, I don't really know what happened there. And this shell doesn't have the same internal cutouts, so I don't know how it's supposed to go. So already that's not going to work. Okay, this is supposed to go like that. And that doesn't fit, so that's obviously not right, but we'll try it anyway. 
well, this side down. Not much I could have figured out. Now I can't even get the screen in there, so I think it just, oh, it does fit, hang on. It just has to go in just right. All right, never mind, that's not working. This is a bad game for this. But see, that's too big too. Wow, so I went out and designed the same bracket twice and fucked both of them up. Nice. Alright, well... This one... Garbage. This one is a lot closer to working, but it still needs a little bit of work. I'm going to pause for a wee bit. I'm gonna just drill these holes out. I'm going to embiggen them slightly so that I can get this in and out without destroying my shell. Alright, so I took an 11 64th drill bit, just went over the holes, and now, look at that, it slips right in, no problems. And just try it again. Still fits in there, line that up to the bracket. It's uh, still not great. But it's a lot better. I think now that the bracket is fully inserted, it's easier to tell. I'm going to put a different game in, because, or just no game, that's better. Way I can see the border. So it still needs to come up a little. I think I'll trim for that. And it needs to go over just a little bit. Surprisingly, not a lot. I want it perfect though. I'm not going to get perfect, but I still want it. <gasps> what am I doing? What am I doing? Hey, hang on. Hang on. Hang on, you. Hang on. I completely forgot about this. I foresaw this issue. I was thinking to myself, gee, Mako, you're going to get these brackets. Neither of them are going to work, and you're going to be disappointed because you still want to put your Game Boy back together, and you're not going to be able to. Do, 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 do. I got this one, 3D printed. This is from Retro Modding, I believe. Uh, I did not order this from them. That probably would have been wise. But I'm going to move this sensor. Come on. Goes almost all the way in the corner. Come on. They've already done the hard work, so I'm just going to defer to their expertise. This will fit almost like that. I need to move it over just a little bit more. Ugh. It's stuck to my tweezers instead of the shell. Curse me for using adhesive, right? Alright, there we go. Now that goes in there. And... Well, typically the screen would go in first. It goes like that. It goes like that.
stop making this difficult. It's not fitting right. At the top at least. That might just be my shell. I think that's just the shell. I might need to uh, trim that. Alright. I was hoping to not do that, because now my next one's gonna. My next install is gonna be all messed up. I'm going to have to actually clean the screen, and heaven forbid. Just cut that off. We don't need that stinking tab. Alright, and this goes in like that, but I need to file this down just a wee bit. Sharpie sucks, man. There it goes. All right. <clears throat> Time to use the tools again. The ever useful needle file. I'm just going to file this down. I'm going to start with the edge to try and get a A notch going and then I'm just gonna keep filing down. This is some really dense plastic and I don't want to get plastic dust all over my workspace so I'm gonna pause while I do this. I'll be right back. Alright, I got impatient and just cut it on the Dremel. That seemed easier at the time. Um, I just took off a little bit. Probably too much but it shouldn't matter. So that'll go over and then yes, now it fits flush. Beauty! So this particular bracket, I actually got printed at um, Shapeways, and uh, because I was getting something else printed at Shapeways, and not the other thing I was getting printed, not specifically because I'm having 3D printer woes, but just because I wanted it printed in a much higher quality than uh, my printer is capable of, and. So far, I'm really happy with it, but that's that's something for another time, I think. All right, it's still not perfect, but I'm just gonna go with it. All right, now, real quick, I'm gonna pause while I pop this LCD or this lens out one more time, so I can just give the edge a little bit of a trim, because as you can see on the left here, there's just some plastic flashing that needs to be taken care of. Again, still not great. I think it needs to go over and up like half, a quarter millimeter and then up a half millimeter. And then it'd be perfect. But it's way better than I'm getting with my bracket. So there we go. I'll be back again. All right, this is going to be the best damn install ever, damn it. Um, I'm going to use this 3M 300 LSE tape that I got from a um, I got from a lens, I think. I don't know. Yeah, last came off a uh, funny playing lens, the DMG IPS lens. I'm just going to cut strips from it and use those. work nicely.
because again I don't have the original adhesive and damn it I'm gonna get this right the first try so it doesn't matter I can use the adhesive I don't there's no way this can possibly go wrong twice in a row that's not how this works oops that's not that's not the right size that's not gonna work I had to cut more off this That's the right size. Ooh, and I have discovered a potential issue. There is, under this tape, something I forgot to trim. All right, so let me pull this off. Just a little bit. Snip that. Come on. Okay. So I'm not sure the easiest way to trim this without just sticking this on the Dremel again. I, uh, oh, I think I fucked it up right there too. I just peel up this whole thing again. I'd rather waste a little bit of tape than, uh, yep, I fucked it up right there too. Stick that there. Okay. I need a knife again. I'm gonna get the big knife. Hang on. This knife. and try my best to not cut towards my body as I cut off this little bit of plastic that I missed. It's under the lens, so if I mess up, it's not gonna be too visible. bit. Uh, ooh. See if I slip and do something like that. It's all under the lens. Don't have to worry about it. But if I cut on this side and slip, I'm gonna have a problem. Oh, if I do exactly that and cut into the shell, I'm just going to cut that bit off that I just fucked up. I can hardly see it. Look at that. Perfect. Can't even tell. It's factory. Off that bit of tape. Let's stick this back down. I'm quickly running out of tape though. to be perfect because I'm probably just gonna fuck it up anyhow. It's, that's the kind of faith I have. That'll be good.
but it's okay because this time I know how to get the lens or the LCD out without completely destroying the shell. And the LCDs are actually quite a bit cheaper than shells, so I'm okay with that if that needs to happen again. I mean, well, I'm not okay with that, but you know, worse comes to worse, and it does happen again. It's not gonna ruin me. Plus, I already have two extra LCDs. I uh, I kind of figured something like this would happen. Or, I kind of planned on this going wrong, just so I would be prepared in case it does. And this adhesive is strictly not necessary, probably not even recommended, especially if you're not using the original gasket, uh, because it's just going to make the LCD harder to line up. Uh, especially if you don't get it right on the first try. Especially if you don't get it right on the first try. And, um, you know, if you ever need to take it out for whatever reason, well, it's not coming out. But I'm prepared to accept that. So, here we are. I'm also using permanent adhesive, this 300 LSE stuff. Once you give it time to, you know, really adhere, um, it does not release easily. Why did I cut off an extra strip? This one final wipe down. For any and all fingerprints. If I need to get it off, it's easier to get the lens off. You know, if there's like dust or something. Because there will be dust. It's always dust. Okay. I'm already not having a good time and I haven't even gotten one of these up yet. One down. Alright, so here's what I'm banking on. I'm banking on getting it close enough in the right position, but not pressing the actual LCD down until I have the um, positioning bracket in place. Ooh, shit. I need to fix this. I didn't see that. That uh, sticks out way too much. Oh, you know what? Hang on, hang on. Plan. I, it was just here, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. We just cut it. X 
accidentally bit into the shell. I'm having, there we go. Boom. Crisis averted. Black for good measure. Same with the screen. And where did my bracket go? I'm not going to drop that down until I find my bracket. There it is. Boom. I think that went well somehow. Color me surprised. It's not perfect, but fuck, it's way better than it was before. All right, all right, all right. All right. Oh, come on. Oh, there it is. Still using all the original buttons. I think the uh, ribbon is actually supposed to go under the bracket. So let's do that. Bracket should still come out, especially on this side. I should be able to just flex it. Come on. And that'll help with the. Uh, insulation just in case something goes where it's not supposed to be. Ideally you'd connect these up first so you're not putting pressure on the screen, but I think that's okay. I think that was okay. going way too smooth. I must have fucked something up. I have that much faith. I've lost my screwdriver, but I found the bit. Well, I dropped my screwdriver like an hour ago. Alright, now I just need to find the power switch, which thankfully I didn't put somewhere dumb. You know, in hindsight, I really should have gotten this printed in a um, better color or taken a few minutes to paint it, because you can see that through the shell. <laughs> it's a clear shell. kind of forgot about that.
right, that's done. That's done. Will that fit there? Nope. So that's going to have to go there. there oh shit Oh yes. And just as a quick test, because I didn't test this last time and I should have. Uh, but I tested it with the uh, DMG kit and heck, it, it, it looks quite a bit better even on this Game Boy than it did on the DMG. Oops. That's what I get for looking at the camera instead of the game. But, yeah, this looks so, so nice. I'm so happy with it. It's turned out way better than uh, the first time. I think, um, really wish I hadn't fucked with it, I guess. You know, it'd still be crooked, but I wouldn't have ruined my nice Game Boy. All things considered, I think it came out pretty nicely though. Still think keeping it original would have been better though. This is some bullshit, man. Alright, well, I think I'm... I think I'm pretty much done with this video. Oh my goodness, I finally hit it once. There we go. One more. There we go. I think played this in a while yep well there we go I'm happy with that I still have um, brightness control via the contrast dial I still have my uh, palette selection I think yeah yep uh, short press to advance medium press to go back I wasn't doing that long enough. So, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Yeah, two second press to go back, and then four second press to enable and disable the pixel grid. Personally, I like it much better off. You get much better contrast. But, you know, it's there if that's the kind of thing you're into. There we go. Thanks for watching, guys. I need to go clean up my desk, get this video compiled for upload. I'm probably going to play with my laser a little bit more to 
because this thing's glow in the dark, why not? It's really not that bright, it's just the camera. But, uh, you know, fun stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Be kind to each other. Wash your hands. Spread the love. Well, love, not germs. <laughs>